What's up, a Cinema Shogun here, and lately we have been talking a lot about man-made disasters. You know, train derailments, chemical spills, factory explosions, you name it. But one of the biggest disasters in history, if not the biggest disaster in history, is Chernobyl. I'm sure most of you all are aware of the story of Chernobyl. It's one of the most fascinating stories out there, if you ask me. It's something that I've always found interesting. You know, looking at the abandoned city, I always found it really creepy. Like something straight out of a horror movie, but even worse, because it's reality. So I've always found it fascinating, and I've always wondered about the wildlife in Chernobyl. And I've heard legends and stories of weird fish and crazy dogs and, and things like that. You know, just tales. I'm not sure if it's true or not. But I think a lot of us have probably heard weird stories about Chernobyl. One thing I used to like doing a lot, and maybe some of you all will do after watching this video, is you could look up videos on YouTube of people who actually travel there, and explore. And I always found those videos fascinating. But, I, but as I was saying, there was always these tales. You know, these stories coming out about weird wildlife found in Chernobyl. Two-headed fish, things like that. And like I said, I'm not sure if it's true or not, or how much of it is real or not. But I would have to believe that being exposed to that much radiation has to have an effect on anything living in the area. There's a reason why people still don't reside there to this day, you know? Well, it's recently come to my attention that they have been doing studies out there. It turns out I'm not the only one that found this fascinating, of course. And there have been studies, and recently some of this research has come out. And yes, the wildlife is and has been affected out there. And from what studies show, the dogs, the wild feral dogs in the area, they, I mean, it's absolutely wild to think about. But they are evolving at a rapid pace. They are evolving far quicker than your, your average living creature, let alone a dog. So this was a news story that I came across. I found it really interesting, really odd, and I wanted to bring it to you all here today because I like to mix it up on my channel, especially in these late night videos. It's fun to talk about interesting, weird things that may seem like a conspiracy. It may seem stranger than fiction, but in reality, this is reality. Let's go ahead and dive in to this news. Chernobyl, the dogs of Chernobyl are experiencing rapid evolution, study shows. For decades, scientists have studied animals living in or near the Chernobyl nuclear power plant to see how increased levels of radiation affect their health, growth, and evolution. A new study analyzed the DNA of 302 feral dogs living near the power plant compared the animals to 10 others or compared the animals to others living 10 miles away and found remarkable differences. While the study does not prove that radiation is the cause of these differences, the data provides an important first step in analyzing these populations and understand and understanding how they compare to dogs living elsewhere. On April 26th, 
1986. The Chernobyl nuclear reactor in northern Ukraine, then part of the Soviet Union, exploded, sending a massive plume of radiation into the sky. Nearly four decades later, the Chernobyl power plant and many parts of the surrounding area remain uninhabited, by humans at least. Animals of all kinds have thrived in humanity's absence. Living among radiation-resistant plants are thousands of feral dogs, many of whom are descendants of pets left behind in the speedy evacuation of the area so many years ago. As the world's greatest nuclear disaster approaches its 40th anniversary, biologists are now taking a closer look at the animals located inside the Chernobyl exclusion zone, which is about the size of Yosemite National Park and investigating how decades of radiation exposure may have altered animals' genomes and even possibly sped up their evolution. Scientists from the University of South Carolina and the National Human Genome Research Institute have begun examining the DNA of over 302 feral dogs found in or around the CEZ to better understand how radiation may have altered their genomes. Their results were published in the journal Science Advances earlier this month. Do they have mutations that they've acquired that allow them to live and breed successfully in this region? Co-author Elaine Ostrander, a dog genomics expert at the National Human Genome Research Institute, told the New York Times, What challenges do they face and how have they coped genetically? The idea of radiation speeding up natural evolution is not a new one. The practice of purposefully irradiating seeds in outer space to induce advantageous mutations, for example, is now a well-worn method for developing crops well-suited for a warming world. Scientists have been analyzing certain animals living within the CEZ for years, including bacteria, rodents, and even birds. One study back in 2016 found that eastern tree frogs, which are usually a green color, were more commonly black within the CEZ. That's racist. The biologists theorized that frogs experienced a beneficial mutation in melanin, pigments responsible for skin color, that helped ionize the surrounding radiation. This made scientists ponder, could something similar be happening to Chernobyl's wild dogs? This new study uncovered that the feral dogs living near the Chernobyl power plant showed distinct genetic differences from dogs living only some 10 miles away in Chernobyl City. While this may seem to heavily imply that these dogs have undergone some type of rapid mutation or evolution due to radiation exposure, this study is only a first step in proving that hypothesis. One environmental scientist, speaking with Science News, says that these studies can be tricky business, largely due to the fact that Sussing out radiation-induced mutations from other effects, like inbreeding, is incredibly difficult. However, the study provides a template for further investigation into the effects of radiation on larger mammals, as the DNA do of dogs roaming the Chernobyl power plant and nearby Chernobyl City can be compared to dogs living in non 
and areas not affected by radiation. Despite a current lack of firm conclusion, the study has shown once again that an area that by all rights should be a wasteland has become an unparalleled scientific opportunity to understand radiation and its impact, impact on the natural evolution. So long story short, ladies and gentlemen, as if the world isn't already crazy enough, as if we don't already have enough to worry about, now it appears that literal werewolves will be coming out of Chernobyl soon. These dogs are, are rapidly, I don't want to say mutating, but they're evolving. What are they evolving to exactly? They didn't necessarily specify that in the information that was released. But the one thing that I will always say, and I always try to remind people, the information that they release, you have to remember that things are always worse than what they tell you, for the most part, usually. Or things are way better than what they tell you. It, it, it's always one of the two. But when it comes to this, them releasing this tidbit of information that, hey, We've been studying these dogs for a while. Yeah, you know, this radiation is causing them to rapidly evolve. Yeah, I don't think that's something that we should just brush off. Because what they're comfortable telling us is like the tip of the iceberg usually. So I would imagine that this is wilder and crazier than we could possibly imagine. They just don't want to, you know give it all to us up front. So they kind of spoon feed us like, yeah, the dogs in Chernobyl are really evolving quickly. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. And then, you know, 10 years from now, they're like, yeah, you know, those dogs in Chernobyl, they've turned into some type of mutant monsters. Well, I don't know, you know, so <laughs> I'm not suggesting that's what's going to happen. But this really raises my, my cur curiosity. And, you know, curiosity killed the cat. So you... It's always good to be curious, but sometimes you got to be careful where you poke your nose. This story really opens my mind to a lot of other things. Like, okay, so y'all know that radiation is, a, is causing, you know, these animals to evolve quicker than normal. So would you use radiation on humans to try to see if they evolve quicker than normal? Like, are y'all using radiation on yourself? And one day you're going to pop out like a super being that's evolved thousands of years because you've been, you know, doing radiation treatment in your secret lab. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, I'm halfway joking, but I'm halfway being serious because when they find things out like this, it's not like they just leave it there. OK, they never just leave things be, you know, they don't they're, they're not just going to. Oh. Yeah, we've gathered this information and we're not going to do anything with it. No, they're going to be doing more tests and then they're going to want to test it on humans if they're not already. So I'm just wondering, you know, where do they go with this information? What are you going to use this information for, per se? And I wonder if y'all are comfortable releasing this info, then what else are you not comfortable releasing yet? So there's always more to the story. And I can't stress that hard enough. Every single time, there's always more to the story. But, you know, um, what was it, last year, the year before, we were, we were all worried about the killer hornets that were coming to America or something. Now we got to worry about feral dogs from Chernobyl. Um, Russia, you better watch out. The Ukraine war is going on right now. Who knows how long it will be before they release the feral dogs, the mutated freaking werewolf monsters to attack Russian soldiers. Who knows what's going to come? <laughs> Who knows what's going to come of all of this madness? I'm just here with a bag of popcorn made from my trusty popcorn maker, watching all of this crazy stuff unfold with all of you all. And as I go over these news stories and report these news stories to you all, don't ever think that I don't that I don't understand how crazy some of these stories sound because from stuff like this to the dead birds that they're turning into drones. It's all really wild. But the crazier part is all of this is real. And I would encourage you all to do your own research on this stuff. 
But let me know your thoughts down in the comments below while you're down there. Hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, ring that notification bell, and I'll talk to you all in the next video.